Hey everybody, I have a Grand Teton pellet stove here. If you've read the reviews, there's a lot of issues with ESO errors popping up on these. If you go into the owner's manual, it describes checking the connection, and if the connection isn't functioning for you, then contacting the manufacturer for a new motherboard. When I received mine, I actually did have a dead on arrival unit. It wasn't able to utilize any of the Wi-Fi or connectivity features, and the errors that you see periodically popping on and off throughout here with transition through all the errors that you would normally see throughout everything listed in the owner's manual. This is not focused on an issue with the motherboard. I did need to replace mine. That did help. It solved the issues where it was periodically causing these errors on their own. This is focused specifically on the ESO 1, 2, and 3 errors. If you look in the owner's manual, it simply describes to check the connections. If you do have to do this, these connections are actually located on the stove's right hand access panel. So if you're looking at it, it will be on your left side. You remove three bolts from the back, which I'll show you here really quick. We have three bolts across the back here, here, and here. I've already removed those to make this a little bit quicker. You slide this panel back and out to be able to access the inside here. Of course, I want to highlight, we have gone ahead and elevated and moved this stove away from the wall so you can actually see behind it for this video. So we should have a pretty good viewpoint going on here and we'll put it back in the other position once we show you how to correct this. But we have a few things going on here. Per the owner's manual, you would check these three connections to make sure they're good. Of course, they're plugged in. We have checked those on multiple occasions and we still have these sensors flickering. After a ton of playing around and a lot of research, I realized it, uh, these issues, ESO1 and ESO3 specifically, are not related to the connection or the motherboard issue whatsoever. These are actually due to the stove getting too cold. If it drops below freezing, so if the stove or any of these components get below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, it will actually throw these errors and a good way to tell that you can do this right off the bat is if it is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the area, but everything reads 32 across the board and you have those errors visible, you know that that might be a circumstance that you're experiencing right now. Today, while we're filming this, we're sitting at about 33, 34 degrees. You'll notice it's kind of bouncing in between uh, 32 up to 35. We do have a couple lights here that are generating heat. The ambient temperature is around 32, so we're in a circumstance where the stove wants to work, but will still throw those errors. When these errors are thrown, your stove will stop. It will not power on, it will not allow it to function. So what I'd really like to show you in this video, how to identify the actual sensors that are being affected here, and how to correct that in a couple different ways to get this thing up and operational. First, do your standard maintenance, clean the tray out of these before we do this, because as you'll see, the ambient temperature is going to mean a lot. So if you let this stove cool all the way back down to ambient temperature, and that's less than freezing, so you can clean it, you'll have to go through this process again to fix it. What I wanna highlight right off the bat, because the owner's manual doesn't mention this, ESO1 is going to be your outlet exhaust temperature reading inside of the stove that occurs right here and it's a little bit difficult to see I'll see if I can get a little bit more light on that you see where this white cord in the back here connects to this hunk of metal my fingers on it right now that's gonna be ESO1, and that's your exhaust temperature reading. This I wanna highlight, you know, it's a sh covered and shielding. It does go into a block of metal, and this lives inside of the body of the stove, of course. So this one, once you get it up to temperature, it does a pretty good job of staying up to temperature. I've done this a couple times when it wasn't as nice as it is today, when it was much colder. 
couple of the actions I've taken is you can do it by taking your fingers and holding it on either side here. That takes a while. You have to wait for that heat to transfer through the metal. But once it does that, it stays pretty well and heated throughout this troubleshooting process. Alternatively, uh, the chemical hand warmers potentially work. Set up a chemical hand warmer here so you don't have to keep your hand there. Usually my go-to is to take a hair dryer. Blow a hair dryer in here to heat this metal source around it up. Uh, that stays and radiates enough heat to keep the sensor above 32 degrees while we're going through this troubleshooting process. So this one's a little bit harder to access. You do have to take the side panel off, but once you get it up to temperature, it does a better job of staying up to temperature and makes this troubleshooting process a little bit easier. The next one we want to discuss, or well, I suppose while we're in here, we'll cover ESO2. ESO2 is actually your hopper sensor. It's the one up, up here. Um, that one can be cold. So that one doesn't cause the same issues that ESO1 and ESO3 have. One thing I wanna highlight, while we look at this, you see ESO3 specifically keeps on popping up. You don't see ESO1, you don't see ESO2. These sensors, they, it can't display more than one error reading at once. If you do have multiple, sometimes it will cycle through, but depending on which one is tripping is which error reading you're going to have pop up here. So right now, our external sensor, uh, again, ESO1 has the ability to stay warm as soon as we've heated up that hunk of metal. ESO3, we'll show you next, is actually your external ambient room air temperature. So this sensor, we got a couple different camera views will work here, but it's this sensor right here, this tip. If you're in a situation where it's below freezing and you need to get this stove started, what I would recommend, either heating that, the ESO1 first by hand with a chemical hand warmer. I use a hair dryer. I blow that up. I get that ambient area pretty warm. So that's above 32. And then I simply take this, pinch it between my fingers. You'll notice now, once I have this held in my hand, if we check this temperature reading, you know, it's spiked up well up almost into the 60s. Now our errors have disappeared. No ESO1, no ESO3. So we're good to go ahead and start this stove up. Here is the catch with this process. I'm showing you how to do it if you don't have many other tools available. You can use your hand to start ESO1 and get that ambient area up to temperature. If you have a blow dryer, it makes life a lot easier. The caveat with this one, with ESO3, if this touches 32 degrees or cooler throughout any portion of this process, your stove will hit its safety features and the entire thing will power off. You need to start over from scratch. So from this point, I am either stuck holding this between my fingers until this stove gets up to temperature and creates an ambient area that's above 32 degrees, or I have to find an external way of keeping this warm. In this situation, we have shop lights out, we have it pulled away from the wall, that would be really easy. Usually, this is on the ground, this is up against the wall, and you don't have shop lights that you're working with. So the easiest option would be attach this to a chemical hand warmer, but if you have nothing else and you're working in a pinch, you may have to stand here for 10, 15 minutes until the stove gets warmed up, goes through its preheating and then heating process, and as it starts to go through stabilization, then it will stop, and with the ambient area a little bit warmer, you'll be able to let go of this thing. One trick I've learned that helps a little bit when I was stuck out here when it was 10 degrees uh, was a, a very unfortunate circumstance for me. Of course, the exhaust, that, that warms up much quicker than the ambient air. We have a fire and the exhaust is blowing the, the heat and everything related to that fire right out the back. So the exhaust piping gets warmer a lot quicker than everything else. If you're stuck in a pinch like I was, where you don't have any external equipment and you have to warm the stuff up with your hands just so you can get your stove warmed up so you and your family don't freeze, there is a spot in the back of this stove. You can go ahead and tuck this sensor in. It puts it inside closer to where the fire is actually happening and closer to that exhaust port. I wanna highlight here, and this is very important, obviously we are bypassing the capability for this sensor to read the ambient air when we do that. 
This allows the stove to start up and to run, but it will no longer accurately read the ambient air in that circumstance. So if we need to, and you do, when you have actual stove operation, have an accurate reading of ambient temperature, we need to make sure we pull it away from that exhaust and we need to make sure that it's not in the stove itself. That is just a little trick. So if you're stuck in a situation where you don't have anything else to heat this for the long term, you don't have to sit here and pinch this sensor between your fingers. So once we get going through this, it's gonna go through the lighting process, it'll go through the stabilization process. Our key feature here, because that exhaust sensor now will have warm exhaust pumping through as we go through this process, it's gonna stay up to temperature. There's no issue with that being above 32 degrees, even if the ambient temperature is well below 32 degrees. But this external sensor is gonna be the catch. If we let go of this at any time and it does drop below 32 degrees, everything halts the whole process starts over we have to go through the cool down period to let everything intentionally cool down and we have to start everything from scratch uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind if you are playing that balance game and you don't have any external heat source to warm this thing up for you while you're doing it make sure you go through and let this happen and make sure the ambient temperature is warm enough to support it this stove um, let me grab the owner's manual real quick there's a whole family of stoves here. This one specifically is the PS130 WTS. From everything that I've searched for, it looks like this, this whole family has the same sensor suite and everything related to it. Uh, so this should be pretty effective for the other versions of this family. But I do know looking at some of the reviews, even after a motherboard exchange or brand new out of the box, we have a lot of people who are going ahead and installing the stove into their home or outbuilding, and they're having issues with ESO1 and ESO3 popping up continuously. This is the trick to bypass those sensors if you are having that. So you can get this thing warmed up, and you see now, kind of even in the back, my ambient temperature, of course our area lighting is helping quite a bit. Has kept us well above 32 where we started. Now we're floating around 42 degrees. No issues with those ESO errors popping up. Mm -hmm. And if, as long as we wait through and let it go through this process, we should be good to go. One thing to keep in mind, you know, the key point of this stove is it is a connected stove. So you can go through online and you can power this thing up. If you're in a circumstance where it is below freezing outside and you're going to try to use that capability to power it up remotely, it will not function. Um, in my circumstance, I built a Wi-Fi mesh network just for this stove we're in an outbuilding right now obviously we're not insulated so it gets pretty cold out here if i know i'm going to be using this for a couple of days i'll go ahead and i'll go through this process and i believe the coldest you can maintain heat on the on this is 50 degrees i'll go ahead and i'll tuck the sensor a little bit closer to that exhaust or into the body of the stove completely understanding that it's no longer act, acting as an accurate ambient temperature sensor but it will allow the stove to continue to run with minimal resources overnight. And then I can use my connectivity features to increase that heat as needed before I do go out and have to use this outbuilding. 